Welcome to Highline BI348 class number 10. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, BI348 chapter 7, and this is the second file, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we got to talk about tracking down formula errors. Now, here's a bunch of steps here. And basically, you can think of errors as two types. An error for a formula that gives you an incorrect answer where it gives you the number or the text that you think you should get, but the answer is incorrect, or you actually have some error. Now, here's a bunch of steps. Here's the short version of these steps that we will use on our next sheet. Before we go over to this sheet and look at some great examples, I just want to look at this list of errors. Now, here's a description, and this is what it looks like. Divide by 0 is simple. If you divide a number by 0, you're going to get divide by 0. Now, the reference error, watch this. Notice that formula says equals C26. And when I enter it, you can see it up in the formula bar. There's C26. But if I come down to C26 and right click delete, now, right-click delete does not delete content. It actually removes the cell. And it will always ask you, which direction do you want to shift things? Now, this is usually a dangerous thing, because if I shift it up and there's a table down below, it actually shifts just part of the table up. But watch this. As soon as I delete this, click OK, that's a reference error. No more C26. Anytime you see reference explanation point, it means the cell reference was deleted. Name, if I said some function and then highlighted, name always means there's some text in the formula that Excel does not recognize as either a function name, because there's no SUMM function. There's an SUM function. Or it doesn't recognize it as a defined name or a table name. Or it might be that your text in your formula, you forgot to put it in double quotes. Now, what is that? Notice that error is right there. That error actually means either one of two things. Either the column is not wide enough, which is the case here, or you can have negative time. You always have to take the later time minus the earlier time. And I'm not going to show you that one. But if you do earlier time minus later time, that's what you see. NA, we'll see that later in this video. That's when you look something up and it's not available. Value error, that's when you do something silly like take a word and try to multiply it by a number. You can't take a, a word times a number. Value error can also mean you have the wrong argument type, or you entered your array formula, which requires Control-Shift-Enter without Control-Shift-Enter. Null error, you're never going to run into that. That's an intersection error. Num, that means the number is either too small or too big, or IRR function can't find an answer. An example of a number that would be too big is, hey, 24 caret 307. It's just too big for Excel to handle. We talked about pound signs and circular reference. Watch this, SUM, and I'm going to highlight a few cells below and accidentally include the cell that contains the formula. If you do that and enter it, it says, hey, we have a circular reference. The fix, of, a, of course, is to not include the cell that the formula is sitting in. We meant to go from C26 to C28. All right, now let's go over to the sheet. Click on Error Examples. This is the model we were working on from video 2 to 9. And here we have some errors down here. Here's our list. We always want to use F2 and check if the formula is correct. Check if the cell references are pointing to the right cells. We always want to check if these two are right, whether the formula inputs or the raw data are correctly entered, meaning the correct numbers or correct text. We can also use formula evaluator and the F9 key to evaluate, which we will see. And there's also a feature called trace precedence. Now, let's just come and start with this formula, F2. The formula looks good, right? Equals, sum, and arrange. 
But check this out. I'm looking up at the range. And I have 1, 2, 3, the right variable cost per unit. But check that out. I accidentally included revenue. So the range is incorrect. Now there's a few ways we can fix this. One way is you could click on the screen tip. And once it's highlighted, you can simply drag to get the correct ranges. Escape F2. Another way you could do it is you can come down and notice, well, it's supposed to be 5 to 7, so I'm going to change this B8 to B7. And as soon as I type 7, it updates. Escape. Still another way, you can simply point to the corner. And when you see your diagonal cursor, click and drag to get the correct range. And when I hit Enter, 997. That's, that's still not right. So this is often the case that you check for 1 and 2. You got the formula. You got the ranges and cell reference right. If all of those are right, then it has to be number 4. We have to look through formula inputs and the raw data. It means one of these numbers is not correct. And if we go back and look at our original description, assigned indirect cost was not $1.50. It was $1.15. So if you're sure that the formula is correct, then it has to be some of the formula inputs. Now, what about this one, value? Remember, that was either the wrong argument in your function or F2 text times a number. So sure enough, and this is common. We accidentally click on one of the labels for our formula inputs. I'm simply going to click and drag. And now we have the correct two inputs for total variable cost. I need variable cost per unit and total units produced. And so when I hit Enter, that's correct. Now let's look at our next one, F2. Sure enough, I'm looking formulas correct, cell plus cell. And the input, total variable and total fix, you know, that's looking fine. Enter. This is total revenue. We can see our formula right here. So when I hit F2, it looks like I should have, re and there it is. I'm looking right off the bat. It should be revenue times unit times 1 minus the discount rate. So I'm simply going to point to the edge and click and drag to get the correct revenue. So revenue looks right, just like it says over there. Quantity is right. And 1 minus the 2% is right. So Control Enter. Oh, but look at this. I have a check figure. That's not even close. Well, F2, wait a second. Times, times, parentheses, minus the formulas looking correct. The cell references are correct. I'm going to try number 5 here. The formula evaluator up on the formula ribbon tab. There's a bunch of auditing tools. And the one I use the most is evaluate formula. Now, if you click on this and then click evaluate, evaluate, it will step through and show you how Excel calculates the formula. I'm going to click Escape because i got to teach you the keyboard. I use it so much that I use the keyboard. Alt-M-V, and it opens it up. Now, we know from dialog boxes that if a button is highlighted, you don't have to use your mouse. You can use the Enter key to enact it. Before I hit Enter, though, look up here. It'll always underline what it's about to evaluate. So right now, it's going to look in cell B8. So I'm going to hit Enter. B8, that should be revenue, so 1650, that's correct. Now it's going to evaluate B13, Enter. So 2,000 is correct. Now it's going to evaluate the multiplying, Enter. That's looking OK. Now it's going to evaluate B9, Enter. And there it is. Using Formula Evaluator, we see that it's not 2% like we actually saw in the spreadsheet. Underneath the number formatting, someone accidentally entered 0.015, which is 1.5%. So I'm going to click Escape and come here. Now when I click on that cell, I can immediately look up in the formula bar and I see the problem. I could also increase decimals. And there we go. Someone accidentally put 1.5 and with no decimals displays as 2%. So I'm simply going to type a 2. Notice because it's pre-formatted with percentage, that percentage symbol appears. So now when I enter, I have my 2%. And now I have my correct match number. Now we have another error here. Oh, it's not. It's just simply I need to widen the column. Whoa, wait a second. That is completely the wrong answer because total profit, well, I'd love to have whatever 
a billion dollars or whatever that is. So I better check this out. F2. It's supposed to be revenue minus expense. Oh, yeah. Someone accidentally put a multiplication symbol. So I'm just looking at the formula and I'm saying that's supposed to be minus. So I enter. And sure enough, that is correct. Now, this formula is the units break even point, and we know from earlier using goal seek that this should be 2661 point something or 2662. So I'm going to hit F2 and look at this. Now, the cell reference is fixed cost divided by revenue times the, the defect or return rate minus the total variable cost. So all the cell references are pointing to the right area, and we have the right a number of digits, right? So now, if we look at our formula over here, we were supposed to force all of the calculations in the denominator to calculate before fixed cost or before the division. So it looks like we forgot those parentheses. So sure enough, in the denominator, open parentheses, close parentheses. The formula matches the formula we're supposed to use. The cell references are looking good. I'm crossing my fingers, Control Enter. Sure enough, there it is, 2,662. Now, I want to show you how to use the F9 key, F2. And we're not really using it to track down an error, but I want you to notice that the denominator here, this is actually the net profit or contribution margin after our defect or refund rate per unit that we have to pay off fixed costs. And I don't see it calculated anywhere in the spreadsheets. So I'm going to use a trick. I'm going to use the F9 key, which is evaluate F9. And it's great because it'll evaluate any part of the formula that you highlight. Sure enough, now I know $6.55 is contribution margin, or the, the net profit per unit to help pay off fixed costs. Now, if you F9, that means it's hard coded in. I don't want to hit Enter. I'm going to Control-Z to undo. When I hit Enter, there it is. Now let me show you another cool aspect of the F9. Notice that I hit F2. And before I put it in edit mode, it was correct, right? So if I highlight to evaluate it and hit F9, I've looked at it. I've noted that it's 6.55. I can also hit Escape to revert back to what was in the cell before I put it in edit mode. So escape. F2 confirms that it actually did revert back to that formula. Now one last example of errors. Let's look over here. And hey, we were hoping this is a F2, a lookup formula. And in fact, it is. Index has an array. Then it needs a row number and a column number to do a two-way lookup. So it's supposed to look up west here, find this row. Then it's supposed to look up Majestic Butte in this, find the column, and then return that intersecting value. Well, sure enough, it doesn't look like it's doing that. So step one, F2. Now I'm going to look. It's got west for match, so that looks OK. It's got Majestic Butte for the second match. So it looks like those cell references are right. Oh, look at that. If I go over to match, match has to look up west within the row headers, which it's not got the correct range in order to find the row number, right? So that purple range is incorrect. I'm simply going to point to the edge and click and drag. And now that's correct. So it looks like for the the row number match, I have the right cell reference and range to look up. For column number, it looks like I got the right green one. Man, I tell you what, I love this range finder. That color coding really helps here. The purple one, L1 to T1, it's hard to see, but there it is up there. So that all the cell references are looking right. The 0 for exact match lookup is correct, too. Let's look right here, the array. Sure enough, ah, look at that. It, I didn't include the entire range, so I'm going to do that trick. I'm simply going to point to the edge. I see my diagonal cursor, click and drag. Maybe that's going to work. Remember, I looked at the formula. I looked at the cell references. So when I hit Enter, I get the curve. No, I get an NA. Now let's use Evaluate Formula, because if I have to, I don't know which part of the formula is causing the NA. So Alt-MV, and now I'm going to look up here. 
hitting Enter instead of using my mouse, I'm going to look. Enter. So it's got match, enter. Oh, it's given us a 1, which is correct. West is in the first row. Enter. Oh, it looks like there might be a problem there with too many spaces. When I hit Enter, sure enough, Formula Evaluator or Evaluate Formula has verified it's the second match that's causing the NA. So Escape F2. I could actually come here, click on column number, and F9. Sure enough, it's, that's causing the problem. Control Z. Now I'm going to actually use F9 twice in a formula. So I had to do that uh, Control Z to undo it. I'm going to double click this and hit F9. And check that out. All I'm doing is looking at what's in that cell. It's got some extra spaces. Now I'm going to hit Escape to revert back. Click in the cell for product and F2. Sure enough, there's some spaces. Now just for the kick of it, I'm going to select that cell in F2. I don't see any extra spaces. So now F2, backspace, backspace. We should have a direct match between Majestic Butte and Majestic Butte there. So there shouldn't be an NA. Enter. Whew, that's looking good. Now I'm actually going to uh, F2. Click here, column number, and F9, and there it is. It looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's the ninth column. So our formula looks like it's working. Not only that, but I can see it's returning the right value. I'm going to test the formula. I'm going to look up East Majestic Butte. So it should be returning 11,512 East. And sure enough, it is working. Now, the only thing I did not show you is up in Formula Auditing, Trace Precedence. Watch what happens. I have this cell. I click Trace Precedence. And instead of Range Finder with rainbow, it just has a dot, which means that's the start of the range. And in this case, it's the cell. They're all being used in that formula. F2 to put it in edit mode. And you can see, sure enough, it's a different way using arrows than using Range Finder. Escape, remove arrows. And I click, and they're gone. Wow, so in this video, we saw a lot about finding errors tracking them down and fixing them. All right, we'll see you next video.